Hi guys, so today I want to talk a little bit about slicers. In fact, I will talk about my favorite slicer to be more precise. Since the beginning, I was using the old Curious slicer and it was for a long time my favorite one. That old version is very simple to set up and to use, and the graphics are pleasant and very user friendly. Although it works well with most models, it does not have all the options and settings needed for more complex models. The new Cura, however, already has many options needed, but the graphics and settings are far from being friendly. The amount of settings is crazy long. There are many many slicers out there like Kiss Slicer, Simplify 3D or Slicer for example, but they too can be confusing to work with, slow while processing, expensive, not user friendly, have awful graphic environment or worse, have poor printing results. Recently I came across with a different slicer that changed my mind and from that point on it became my number one slicer. I'm talking about Idea Maker from Raze 3D. The Raze 3D brand has their own printers, but their software can be used with any printer. Idea Maker is super easy to set up and to use, and combines the user-friendly environment that everyone likes with all the powerful options and settings that everyone needs. The first thing to do is to set up our printer. As you can see, I already have here the TiVo Tornado. You just add the printer name here, the nozzle diameter, and the printing area. For this, you need to type in your travel distances and not your bed size. Don't change the steps per millimeter and X and Y composition for now. Select heat bed if you have one, the filament type, and the extruder configuration. If you have only one extruder, just leave the offsets at zero. Next, load a model of your choice. You can just drag and drop the STL file into the slicer. The graphics and overall environment is the best I have ever seen. You see the model in great detail. At the top, you have lots of options. The standard new, open, import and export options, copy, paste, cut, select, slice options, lots of view options including a wire frame view, and many options related with the model and its positioning on the bed. Idea Maker includes an awesome feature that detects and repairs issues with the STL file such as remove duplicate faces, remove isolated faces, fix face orientation, flip mesh orientation, and fix holes. The auto repair fixes all of the above automatically. Next, you have printer related options and of course the help. Under those you have a sort of shortcuts for the most frequent options needed. And finally the three most important options. Add model, slice it and export it. IdeaMaker also has manual supports capability. You can select Add Supports and see according to the settings where the slicer is adding automatically the supports. You can then add as many supports as you want where you want them and remove the ones you don't want. In the slicer options you have first the template menu. You can have different templates with different slicer settings. 
I normally have a few for certain specific models and a basic one that I use for simple models where I just want to change the infill percentage or layer height. Having said that, you can create a new one or edit one of the existing ones. Right there, you have the infill percentage, number of shells, platforms and support options. In advance, you have all the available slicer settings. These are grouped in tabs. You have all the layer related options, infill options, support options and raft, cooling options which include the cooling control by the layer which is great. Ooze options with many retraction settings In others you have cool features like the spiral vase mode and check thin walls which is one I use many times and pause at height And last but not least the G-code tab with the start and end G-code commands. Once you have all the settings in, just hit slice. This slicer is pretty fast and in just a few seconds you have the details and it's ready to export. Another cool feature of Idea Maker is that the preview mode, in terms of graphics, it's very detailed and clear. Compared with all the other slicers, the preview is awesome and you can easily see the layers and detect issues. You can select only current layer, show retraction and the travel. The way you interact with the environment and how easily you manipulate and see the model it's very very good and for me it's the best from all the other slicers. The settings are easy to find and the preview which sometimes it's ignored it's also the best from what I've seen. The guys behind Idea Maker are always trying to improve the software. There is already a beta version with lots and lots of new features such as the ability to control the temperatures for each layer. But with all these cool graphics and nice settings, can this slicer produce prints with good quality? Let's find out. And this is the first one. As you can see, the details are amazing. Please note that this print has not been fixed. This is as it came out from the printer. And here is another example. You can see the quality of it is just impressive. And here is the last piece of the skull. As you can see, all these features make this slicer to be one of the best slicers available for 3D printing. And how much does it cost? Absolutely nothing, it's freeware. You don't need to spend hundreds of dollars to get such powerful slicer capable of producing great results. And that's why this is my favorite slicer. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, go ahead and test Idea Maker. Thanks for watching, I'll see you guys next time, bye!